Good morning! It's Friday, May 22nd. Long holiday weekend. We get to log off early today. And there's lots of activity across the street because I think they got their siding delivered. But the compressor is in the back today. So, let's see, Polly's pills came in. I've got my capsaicin that I'm taking, which is for um, polycystic ovaries. It helps. It really does. It's kind of miraculous for those of you who don't know about them. I highly recommend you do the research because it's the only thing that kind of keeps me sane. So, oh, and here's an update on my nails. They're a little yellow, um, and actually I need recommendation for a good base coat, kind of a strengthener, because the one that I'm using, as you can see, has this weird yellow tint, because my nails are not yellow. I did break this nail because I had that memory crack, but these aren't too bad considering that I do everything around the house. Um, so today, I know you see smoke because it's my incense. Um, today I need to run out, well actually I sh need to do some research on a wet dry vac, a little smaller one than the big one that we have downstairs. So I'd like to have that maybe for the coop. That might make cleaning out the coop much easier. You know, while the girls are playing in their playpen, I just suck everything out and add new shavings. I mean, that's kind of easy peasy. So, and now that it's getting warmer, I have to do it every week or so maybe every two weeks I do put a fresh layer down but so I'm just replying to some comments that I got from yesterday's vlog and I have to change my um, image back to my regular photo and uh, I don't know what today's gonna bring but I have some technical things I need to resolve first thing this morning for work um, which hopefully I can get done it's just code sometimes can be tricky you know space in the wrong location could break it Hi, Mosky. Hi, honey. Hi, Chester. So, um, they've all been out. I just have to go open up the girls and get myself a nice, fresh water to drink a liter. I usually drink a liter in the morning, first thing in the morning, then another liter with lunch, and then a liter in the afternoon. So, I try to keep it to, like, five or six liters a day. That That's what makes me happy. That's what makes me feel good. And I have to. I forgot to plug my camera in last night. Oh, and I I forgot to change the garbage the vacuum bag yesterday. Oh well, that's all right. I'll do it today. So garbage and recycling. I think I think garbage has been picked up. I'm not sure if the recycling has been. So hi Chester, 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 Chester. He can't hear me. He's looking right at me, but he's he can't hear me anymore. I have to really yell, and I don't want to yell at the camera. So I'll check in with you guys when I get to my desk later on. One of the unpleasant side effects sometimes of taking the capsaicin is the capsules will start to dissolve before they actually hit my stomach. <laughs> oh. And I'm supposed to take them with food, and which is the mistake I make every, each and every time. If I eat something right before and I take them and then continue eating, it kind of traps them in between food. Usually bread kind of helps, you know, because it absorbs it. So just water itself doesn't help an enormous amount. If anything, it just spreads the heat. And if you could feel it in your esophagus, it's pretty gnarly. So um, I have a couple of things I already got done. Um, a little disappointed with Express Script, the requirement that we have to... Um, the long-term, any long-term medication, so any maintenance medication that, Paul, that, that Polly is on, have to be ordered in three-month increments for a mail order. A lot of companies are doing that. That's how they save money. And it makes perfect sense because out-of-pocket for the insurance, it's a fraction for the mail order versus even getting refills on a monthly basis at a brick-and-mortar pharmacy. Fine, I understand. I work for healthcare industry, healthcare insurer. I understand all of that. But the, the turnaround is absurd. You can only order or you can only refill the script after a certain date and because they're all we're getting them all refilled around the same at the same time. I ordered everything on the seventh. And Polly's last script arrived yesterday. They supposedly have a 10-day turnaround time or maximum of 10-day turnaround time from the 7th to the 21st is unacceptable. And I'm actually going to call them and let them know that because 
if they're not getting feedback from customers, they're not going to know that they need to improve the process. And it's not like we're just, these are occasional, these are requirements. He has to take them every day. And actually, that was the last dosage he had left yesterday. So I had to, I refilled all his scripts um, yesterday when that arrived. So he's all set for the, you know, for the next three months. But I do, I refill his little weekly thing every, you know, once a week. But it, I just found it irritating because all the, he's on six different medications and three of them are tied together. They can only work together. And one of the ones I was missing is the one that's tied to the working in conjunction. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Sorry, total random. <laughs> Saturday morning cartoons are gone. How can that be? Ah, because everything's on demand, right? Anyway, yeah, the random thoughts, but... So I just, I, I found that kind of unacceptable. So I want to at least provide them feedback that that kind of turnaround time, at least give us a heads up. Like, if there are... If you know you can't fill it from one location, fill it from another. It's a nationwide, Express Script is nationwide and they have multiple locations. So if you can't fill it from the one that's closest to me physically, to our location physically, fill it from another one. It's mail. It, you know. Anyway. I, I think it's important uh, as much to notify customer service when something is not going well. Also let them know when something is going well. I have placed calls and you know, sent emails and posted messages on companies' sites where, you know, they've provided exemplary customer service or they've gone above and beyond. Um, you know, it's nice to get feedback when it's constructive and, you know, not swearing and yelling because everything can lead to uh, improvement of the process. I mean, that's... We live in a consumer-driven, in you know, world and... We interact with companies and, you know, we, ex we have expectations as consumers and customers and companies have expectations of us as consumers. So I understand that there's give and take. When it comes to kind of life saving, altering, relied on things like scripts, it's kind of pertinent that they stick to what they're saying. So anyway... I'm going to go find something to eat because I'm starting to feel kind of uh, wooz, woozy. Blah. It's not a pleasant feeling. But it's easily solved by just a little bit of food. So today is the last day for mom and dad um, in London and I kept hoping they would ring me so I could break into song London Calling, but they didn't. So instead you just get to see my London iron on. But I still had not decide what to put where to put it, but I have it. It was on sale. I got it. I loved London. I still do. That's my one of my dream places to live. Someday, maybe. You never know. So I got some mail today, but I'm a little bummed. I was gonna say happy mail. I mean it does make me happy, but let me show you. This is from Blitzy. It arrived in this box. And the content is a 8x8 graphic 45 notepad or uh, paper pad but look it's all like wonky now because of the way we're shoved in the box I'm not really thrilled about that and then I just got some of these silver washies I don't know why I bought them but my uh, Erin Condren planner has silver decor on the front and silver and craft. I think that's what suckered me in. But I was really excited to get this, you know, home sweet home. But I know I can just easily flatten it out. But it's a little bum that that box did not fit this <laughs> pad of paper. So then I also got a pinch me box, which I think this is the second one I've gotten. Um, and this one arrived in less than the 21 days, so let's open it up and see what's inside. I'm going to grab my, my tripod. So I am done working for the day. Um, I actually even went and replied to a bunch of emails. Um, and I'm going to run over to the hardware store because I need some 
I need to check out some prices on shop facts. Um, I think we're going to replace the wax seals on our toilets and I have uh, a DIY. I want to fix the, there's a, like a drippy faucet in the kitchen now and there's a drippy faucet in the downstairs bathroom that even though I've mentioned it, no one really is doing anything about it. When I say nobody, I mean Polly. Because there's really only two of us with opposable thumbs in the house. And it seems as though I could drop, I don't know, neon sign hints and still doesn't work. So essentially I just have to do it if I want it done. So I'm going to check it out. And I don't have a problem doing it. It's just that I need to go get the supplies. So I'm going to go to the hardware store and I got an egg out of the coop. I think it's the fourth one. I have not had a five egg day in some time. As a matter of fact, I have to stamp the eggs on the next few weeks, probably next couple of months. So uh, mom and dad arrive tomorrow. Um, I think they arrive at 2.30 actually, JFK. And then they're taking the limo to the train station in Hartford. So I think I'm gonna go pick them up. They're gonna call me when they're approaching home so I can run over and, and pick them up and bring them home. So I thought maybe I can give them like, I have a cute little six egg cart, clear carton, so I'll give them some eggs, maybe make them a bread. I don't know, we'll see. Give them some food so they're not, oh my gosh, my car needs desperate vacuuming after this winter. Maybe that's what I'll have Polly do. So tonight we're supposed to get a freeze, so I think we're gonna bring those little plants in the mudroom. All right, so let's go to the hardware store. I kinda like it there. That was a bust. I'll show you which one I mean when I get home. Hey, listen. No squeaking rakes. Um, Polly took it in and it turns out there was a pebble on my um, brake pad. That's what all that squeaking was. So all solved, all fixed. Now I'm back home. So what I was trying to get at um, Ace Hardware Rockies, which is the local one Rockies, um, was a wet dry vac that was two and a half gallon, a small one, because um, I thought it would be nice to have on hand to, oh, something knocked over my rosemary, um, to have on hand for cleaning out the chicken coop um, quick and easy, and, oh, I wanted to open the other windows up to air out my car a little bit. Um, well, lo and behold, they have it on their website. And it says, it's not one of those items you can um, order and have shipped to the store. Um, they're, they're carrying Craftsman tools only now. Um, and this was a Craftsman, but I have a feeling, maybe I am forgetting where I checked. Because I looked at two different places. I thought I could get something local, which is the Ace Hardware. It's around the corner from us. Um, easy, convenient, uh, grant you have to pay tax, although I think Amazon you have to pay tax now anyway, anyway, but it's free shipping. And there was one on Amazon that was, I want to say $39, but it won't be here till Tuesday, because Monday is a holiday, and I don't want to pay a $13 shipping to have it delivered tomorrow for, <clears throat> for Saturday. So I think I'm just going to do that. I'm going to go and look it up and see. <clears throat> Oh, I have some pollen in my throat. So I'm going to go in. Maybe I'm going to start dinner because it is early, but this way it will be all done. And maybe I could do some crafting. I have to do my mom's earrings because if I, if I don't have them for her for tomorrow when she arrives back from Europe, I will be... I know she'll be disappointed. I know she's looking forward to getting them. So I just have to get my tushy in gear. So let's go in and start the split pea soup. So I've been replying to comments, it's a beautiful breezy day, uh, I'm going to start soup in a few minutes, but um, Shirley Stein, thank you for your suggestion to have um, daily kind of comments on current events. Um, I think it would be a great idea, and please let me know if you guys, I'm sorry about that, yeah you get the whole vibration on the screen. Um, let me know if that's something that you guys would be interested in. Um, I could not help myself uh, but comment about the one from yesterday, uh, the 
um, Maggie Gyllenhaal, Gyllenhaal about the fact that at 37 she was told she's too old to be the love interest for a 55 year old male. I just could not keep my mouth shut. And there is something today that has been, it's very topical, it's all over the news, it's hard to not trip over it somewhere. It was in the car, it was on the radio, it's, you know, on social media. The Duggar family, who are the stars of TLC's 19 Kids and Counting, their oldest son, um, is apparently information that has been released, leaked, I'm not sure, a 2006 situation where, he, when he was 15, I think, he was a minor, um, child molestation charges, which are no joke. It's that any sexual, inappropriate sexual contact, it, red flags, blaring lights, you know, police, all of that. It's hard to not come across this story. There's a lot of people who have... It's a... It's a the topic is very sensitive. And to approach it in a way that is respectful to victims and those who have been victimized and not to just brush it under the carpet or say that God has forgiven him and therefore everyone else should. I can't judge anyone else. I'm not here to judge um, this young man. However, it seems as though there is a lot of irony in the fact that he was working for a Christian lobbyist in DC that was one of the things that they were talking about is that gay people could molest children. Ironic. I j just... I, the first time I saw this, I got heebie-jeebies. The family is definitely has lots of love for each other. They are, you know, well-liked and respected. But when something like this comes out, it gives you another glimmer into the fact that there is no such thing as perfect. The word perfect or perfection or perfect family kind of has to be redefined. There are things in everyone's background families that may not be something you want to discuss. This, since this was uh, on, I mean, I'm just curious how this got released. If he was a minor, aren't those sealed? Like, isn't that information sealed? And if this was such a significant event where there were multiple, I believe, female minors, again, I kind of don't want to read any more, more than what I've kind of peripherally have been exposed to. I'm not an expert on this. It's just my reaction from all of the, you know, all of the information that's coming, you know, across. Uh, minor information on minors, you know, arrest information. I'm not sure whether he was arrested or or what, what, what there was a charge. Isn't that kept private because they are minors? So I don't know. It just, it, to me, it's just... We literally just saw an episode where there was a... Because I think TLC was running a marathon. Because I know there was like back-to-back -back episodes the other day. We were just flipping through the channels. And we just saw the episode where he was marrying his wife and said that they were saving their first kiss to have at the altar. And it just... Now have, having this information come to light just screams of hypocrisy. I, I don't know. I... This is a very, very, you know, tender subject. It's not... Everyone's going to have their own perspective on the situation. I just think that when someone tries to come across as faultless, um, it's very hard to live up to that. Um, the fact that he was a minor, 15, at 15, you 
you are well aware of right from wrong unless there are mental issues that you're dealing with. So you don't touch people inappropriately, sexual contact inappropriately. It just stands to reason. And then I heard something else that I might have been some of his sisters. I just, I, we, like, creeped out, like, skeevy kind of information. So, oh, so there's my, my, pers my take on it. I am, I can't say that I'm shocked. Um, I am, however, disappointed that the primary um, press releases or the statements from his parents are the fact that he something about the fact that God has forgiven I don't know I don't even know I can't even I don't even want to misquote it so I'm curious to hear what your personal take on this situation is and I know that as of about half an hour ago there was a message posted that TLC has pulled the show, so there he goes. TLC pulls the uh, 19 Kids and Counting after these allegations came to light. And they're being called allegations, but there's apparently confirmation from the family that um, Josh has admitted this to his parents, and his parents took, them, took him to the authorities when this occurred, so... It's not like somebody was trying to slander him because he's on TV. This happened in 2006. So it, it's not... Mm. I It scares me to think that there are children who are exposed to this kind of painful and sometimes life-altering inappropriate sexual exposure. I just... It's terrible. Sex should be wonderful, shared between the people who love each other, who are expressing their love and gratitude and all of that. It should not be scary and frightful and at an age where you should be playing with Legos and dolls. Oh, all right. I'm going to get off my soapbox. And, yeah. I feel like I need to wash my mouth out with soap after I've talked about this. So it's soup time. I have my mise en place. Where was I before? I was so rudely interrupted by a phone call. Don't people know that I'm videotaping? So I'm heating up the pan. Grapeseed oil, it's just flavor neutral. And I'm gonna add, um, it's about a cup of onion, half a cup of carrots, half a cup of celery. I'm gonna reserve the garlic until a little later. I'm gonna parsley, a little pinch of red pepper flake, and two bay leaves. So let's get this all in the pot, or most of it. So everybody's in the pot sweating. I'm gonna do this for about eight minutes or so. I don't really want the color. I just want the veggies to give up juices. And I have generous grind of fresh cracked black pepper and uh, ground sea salt because there's no salt in anything else. This is, I'm gonna be using um, unsalted chicken stock and then my homemade uh, turkey stock from the freezer. I already have the split peas soaking in a colander. That way I've changed the water already twice. I have the ham which I will dice and then the ham bone is going to go into the pot. So between the stock and I'm going to add some water until everything's covered. Once these release some of the liquid, I'm sorry I'm doing this awkwardly with my left hand, um, I'm going to add the garlic and red pepper flakes, but I think I'm gonna reserve the parsley until a little later, so I'm gonna save most of that off to the side. But that's gonna go in in a few minutes, so I'll show you what that looks like when I'm ready to add the garlic, and then it will be on the heat for another three or minutes or so before I start adding the stock and the washed and um, rinsed 
rinsed and soaked split peas. And I'm using green, green split peas. You can use yellow ones. You can use lentils. Same stuff, really. So all the veggies are in. I'm going to start adding the stock. I want about the... I want about eight cups of liquid. So this is about a cup and my frozen stock. Let me see. All you have to do is hold it around the outside and it'll start to melt. And I'll add that and then probably equal parts of stock and water. So from the body heat, look, it's already moving up. So I'm gonna dunk it in there. Um, and these are the containers from Dollar Tree. They're terrible. There's no snap, they don't close well, so that's going in the trash. They're not, oh, uh, number five, I guess I could recycle them. So I'm gonna add probably another three cups of water, and then I'll add the peas and the ham bone, because I wanna make sure all of that it gets covered by liquid. And then I'm gonna lower the heat and let it simmer. And I, I do have to grab some time from the garden. You see how the peas plumped up, the split peas? Because if you look at them dry, I wish I had captured it dry. They're a little bit more shriveled up, so they plumped up a little bit, and I have enough liquid in here to mostly cover the bone, which is fine. So make sure the split peas are under, and this will melt and it'll be a little more. I'm gonna bring it up to a boil, and then I'm going to turn it down to a simmer, and then grow, go grab, <laughs> go grab some time from the garden and that's going to be the only other addition so I have salt black pepper red pepper flake two bay leaves lots of garlic because we like things garlicky you can certainly control that that's a wonderful thing about cooking at home you introduce the flavors you and your family enjoy and you don't have to wonder is it going to be the way I like it it will be you made it so yeah let me uh, wait till this comes up to a boil and then I'll turn it down to a simmer and go grab some be um, some thyme, close up the chickens, and then I can go relax or reply to comments on YouTube. It's it, that's relaxing to me. So yeah. And then the only thing I'll have left to do is dice up the ham. I'm gonna puree this soup with an immersion blender, so I will pull out the bone and Moses well, is talking to me and the two bay leaves. Puree this whole thing, and then I will add back diced ham and probably some frozen peas because I like that pop of flavor like little like little caviar pops um, probably like maybe a cup um, after it's pureed so there's a little bit of texture and I was going to make bread but now I don't feel like it I think I have pop can biscuits if I do I'll make those but if I don't I guess I could make I have time to make bread that one of those quick breads that takes an hour I forgot to mention, if you want to make this vegetarian, don't add the ham. Uh, use vegetable stock or just water. And then when you saute the vegetables, there's a lot of flavor that's garnished from that. So you get the caramelization from the onions and the flavor from the garlic. Um, you can add a little uh, squeeze of vegetable paste. It's a stuff that's kind of like concentrated with carrots, tomatoes, peppers, onions. Um, I don't need to add it to this, but you certainly can leave out the ham entirely. As a matter of fact, there are plenty of delicious split pea soup that it's totally vegetarian. And I'm not adding any cream to it or anything in the end, so yeah. So I wanted to mention that would make a great meatless Monday meal sans the ham. Didn't I just mention that there's only four eggs from the girls? Look, egg number five and some thyme. Just gonna throw it in like that and then pull out the sticks when it's done. <laughs> Your chest are talking. So yeah, my job here is done pretty much. So I think the soup is ready, so I'm gonna turn it off, pull the bone out. Yeah, I think I'm gonna need to do that off camera. Um, make sure there's nothing stuck on it, like yummy veggies. And then I have my I'll use them or well. I'm going to pull the bone out, the two bay leaves and the stems from the thyme, and then I can uh, impulse it. I have the meat of the ham cut up. I don't think I'm going to use all of it. I'm going to save some for maybe hash over the weekend. Because, you know, we don't need to stuff this because we still want it to be soupable with a spoon. 
There's the two bay leaves and the stems from the thyme. So I'm going to, and I pulled out the bone because the dogs are going crazy over it. So I'm going to let it cool off before giving each one a piece of it. And I'm going to um, pulse it and then I'm going to taste it for seasoning. So it's all pureed, has really good flavor. The only thing I added is about a tablespoon of sambal because the red pepper flakes, I couldn't really taste them. So it's nice and silky without being baby food. Has a nice consistency, and I think I'm gonna put in um, half of that ham <laughs> and the rest of the parsley, and um, let it heat through. Off the heat it doesn't even need to be turned on. And I was gonna check to see if I had peas. So that's what I have left for ham uh, to make hash over the weekend. I'm gonna put that away in the fridge. I'm gonna dress the parsley or each bowl with a couple of pieces in the parsley and check it out there's some sweet peas in there now just put a frozen bag in there uh, off the heat and they're so sweet and tender it's like the perfect combination so hearty soup i think paulie's gonna stop and get a loaf of crusty bread a price chopper on the way home from work and i will show you what this looks like all served up. But first I'm gonna put away the ham. So there is dinner, a hearty bowl of split pea soup. I put some fresh peas in there, or fresh frozen, flash frozen peas. Not cooked, I, I put them in after the um, stove was turned off. And diced uh, ham, fresh bread, yum. So that's gonna be it for us for today. Thank you so much for stopping by and keeping us company. We'll see you all tomorrow. Don't forget about that thumbs up and share. And check out the other social media places. You can find sneak peeks before the vlog goes live the following morning. We'll see you all tomorrow.